Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, October 23rd. So glad you can join us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Prime Minister Mia Motley signaled she's not pleased that layoffs in the public sector was not all smooth. But she rubbished suggestions that the entire process was a mess against the backdrop of strong criticisms leveled by some trade union leaders. At a special Meet the Prime Minister session with students and staff at the University of the West Indies, Ms. Motley came face to face with the issue of layoffs as several students revealed that they were among the affected workers. Motley again apologized for the tough measures her government has been forced to implement. What we did for the most part, when the security guards went home last week, everybody went home with the checks. Regrettably, some ministries have not gotten their act together to give people the checks. Am I happy about it? Absolutely not. But to say that that is a representation of the entire public service is a lie. And, and this notion that you are going to continue to badger and attack public servants for conduct is something that I've said to the head of the civil service. He needs to come and defend. Because Barbados has some excellent public servants and that we have had a comparative advantage because of this. Do we get it right all the time? No. And is there a problem that we can... You said it earlier. Can we find a more effective way to do some of the things in the public service than we've been doing for 50 and 60 and 70 years? Yes, we can. But regrettably, we haven't done it this going down as perfect as we should have. The Prime Minister, however, assured the affected workers that government will stick to its promise to provide them with new opportunities. I give you the assurance that not only will you be able to finish your education, but you must have an opportunity for work in this country. Mercifully, Ross University has said that they will give all persons from government who have been laid off a five-day advantage on anybody else who applies to them, okay, with respect to being able to hire them. We're trying to do the same with other private sector employers. For those who are going, who are not stenotypists, and the notion that we are only letting go stenotypists is the Dennis Kelman approach that 80 <laughs> is less than 20 or 20 is more than 80. Because last time I checked, there are more men, regrettably, that are going home because of MTW. And why? Because the government has $100 million in road works from CDB, IDB, and CAF to execute now. Some you will see from tonight, we had to tell them you can't do it in the middle of the day. And then we have, and I do the tour on Friday, we have sandals or beaches, whatever you want to call it, starting a four, $900 million project in Spitestown. That's the meeting I just came from with all of the planning officials at Parliament that I left the AG chairing for me. Because that project will start in January. Sajikor has a major senior citizens village at Boarded Hall that's also starting in January. And there are a number of other projects that we believe that the people who are being laid off from the Ministry of Public Works, it's 299 or whatever the number is, that they will be able to get work. In other news this Tuesday, the Congress of Trade Unions and Staff Associations of Barbados raised concerned that government's restructuring exercise will take a toll on the Royal Barbados Police Force. Police officers will not be directly impacted by the job cuts to the public service, but Situsab is concerned that the termination of civilian clerical officers will have a negative impact. During this morning's meet and greet session held at the headquarters of the Barbados Union of Teachers, recently elected CITUSAB President Edwin O'Neill suggested that police officers will have to fill the void. We are also further concerned about this business of the clerical officers, um, their employment. As you are aware, over the years there has been what was termed the civilianization of some duties within the Royal Barbados Police Force. Uh, I am informed that some clerical officers from within the Barbados Police, the Royal Barbados Police Force, will be going. Um, that will create a void. It seems to me that 
that is a void that has to be filled. Um, and who will fill it? Obviously, policemen. Um, there are, the, the police force is already experiencing a shortage. And if this, if these, these clerical posts are to be filled, um, that is going to escalate or accentuate that, the level of that um, shortage. Meanwhile, CITUSAB's General Secretary, Dennis DePisa, today put the union's membership on notice that there will be no deviation from the organization's governance structure. His comment came in response to claims made last week by President of the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union, Mary Redman, who said that her union would reconsider its membership to the umbrella body. The BSTU president lamented that the behavior of one CITUSAB officer could destroy the organization. However, when asked by Barbados today this morning to respond to Redmond's concerns, O'Neill made it clear that such quarrels were par for the course. The business of trade unions, political parties, cricket teams are all about strong personalities. <clears throat> but equally, for either of those entities to be successful, there must be a level of cooperation. Um, in my vantage point, it is for me to direct those energies towards workers' representations and not about power players. Um, in any group that is about volunteer, volunteering and volunteerism, the tide is going to shift from time to time. Sometimes it goes my way, sometimes it doesn't go my way. At the end of the day, we have to determine where our interest lies. A 58-year-old salesman accused of setting fire to a building housing several businesses on Bolton Lane, the city, has been remanded to HMP Dodds. Ricardo Anderson Rivier of Fairfield Main Road, Black Rock, St. Michael, appeared before Magistrate Douglas Frederick today on a single arson charge. He is alleged to have destroyed by fire the building belonging to OMB Limited or intending to destroy the property by fire. The accused was not required to plead to the indictable charge, which was allegedly committed on October 19. Riviere, who is represented by attorney at law Mohaya Mayat, will reappear before the number one District A Magistrates Court on November 21. There's regional and international news after this short break. Original news now, Winston, the mighty shadow Bailey, has passed away. According to his son, Sherlyn Bailey, the Calypso icon took his final breaths at the Mount Hope Hospital at 3.40 a.m. The 77-year-old was set to receive an honorary doctorate from the University of the West Indies this week for his contributions as a composer. Condolences have already been streaming in. The Trinidad and Tobago Promoters Association said Shadow was regarded as a true patriot and friend, and the country was poorer for his passing. Some of the Calypsonians' more popular hits include You're Looking for Horn, Feeling the Feeling, and Baseman. On the international scene, U.S. President Donald Trump said today that Saudi authorities staged the worst cover-up ever in the killing of prominent journalist Jamal Khashoggi this month. More in this report. In the speech to Parliament, Erdogan said that there were strong signs Khashoggi's killing was planned, with some Saudi agents arriving the day before on a reconnaissance mission. 
He also said that the consulate's cameras were removed on the day. On the day of the incident, employees at the consulate were gathered at a room under the pretext of an audit. Employees at the residence were given a day off for the same reason. Erdogan didn't mention Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, who some U.S. lawmakers suspect ordered the killing. But he said Turkey would not complete its investigation until all questions were answered, adding that Hashogshi was killed in a savage way. Turkish sources have told Reuters they have an audio recording purportedly documenting the killing, but there was no mention of it in the speech. It's been three weeks since the journalist and U.S. resident entered the Saudi consulate here in Istanbul, never to be seen again. Saudi Arabia have already sacked a number of officials over the killing, including a top aide to the Crown Prince, who intelligence sources say ran the killing. That's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.bobbylistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.